Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Today's video, we have got a redhead in the chute and she's crossing her front legs. In the world of cows, that usually means we've got dual sole ulcers on these front feet. Let's get started on this right one and see what we got. When it comes to sole ulcers on front feet, they're almost always going to be on the medial, and that's the same case as we've got going on here. We're going to have to remove this overgrowth here, and underneath, we'll uncover that thing. As we swing in here, you can see where that ulceration is in that typical sole ulcer site. So we've got some uh, loose horn here and, and double sole. We're going to have to remove that to expose that lesion. One of the theories behind ulcer formation is that an individual claw becomes overburdened, becomes out of balance, and you get too much weight focused on that particular claw. And that's what then would form an ulcer. And what we see here would tend to make that seem true, right? We had a lot of buildup on that claw compared to that lateral claw. But the one problem with that is that that's not a typical uh, growth pattern for a, for a cow's foot. What usually happens on a normal foot is that the toe becomes elongated. Most of the pressure and wear is focused toward the heel of the foot. So we, when we trim a cow, a normal cow that doesn't have any problems, we tend to remove very little toward the heel and most of it toward the toe section. That's the complete opposite of what we see when we have an ulcer situation. We end up with a lot of growth at the heel and not much toward the toe. And so what I think actually happens is sometimes we mistake what a symptom, which is this thickening of the heel, as the cause of an ulcer, when in actuality it's just that, it's a symptom. We get trauma inside that foot that causes her to, number one, put less weight on the heel of her foot where that ulcer is, focus more of that toward the toe, which is why we get more uh, wear at the toe and less... Um, less wear at the heel, which is why that sole begins to thicken, as well as we know that horn production increases as a result of trauma. So we have both of those things combined that cause that, that uh, appearance of, you know, extra horn at that heel site. So, but we look at it and we say, well, obviously there's overgrowth here. There's an ulcer underneath that overgrowth must have caused that ulcer. But anyway, so what we, regardless, what we need to do here is remove all of this loose horn from around that lesion now that it's there to get it to heal. And once we get that taken care of, that ulceration, now we get these, the angles correct in that foot again, that should remove these uh, pressures in that, that, that are causing that ulcer, and that should heal up nicely as long as we can get the loose horn away and get a block on that other claw to give it some rest. As we swing in here, you can get a look at what's left of that lesion. She's almost actually got this healed on her own, but not complete yet. So I'm gonna put a block on this other claw just to give that some relief and let that finish up healing. I'm 
Another thing to think about when it comes to that theory we were talking about earlier about ulcer formation is how we actually treat a foot to heal an ulcer. We actually take all of the weight we can and isolate it on the other claw to get that claw to heal. You know, that in itself, that theory or that therapeutic approach to healing a lesion should tell us that it won't necessarily cause an ulcer because we do that all the time to heal ulcers. Because these cows spend almost all their time on pasture, dermatitis is really not a concern on this farm. So I'm just gonna give this uh, foot a quick spray and I'm gonna put it down without a wrap. As I said at the beginning of this video, she was crossing her legs. So we need to take a look at this other foot and see if there's an ulcer in that one as well. And with a couple swipes of the knife, this ulcer becomes evident. Now, while that first ulcer was mostly healed, this one is not. This one's very fresh and new, so this it's gonna be much more uh, difficult, much trickier to work around this lesion than it was that first one. Another interesting point about ulcers is that over the course of the last year or so of this channel, I've had three or four different instances of double sole ulcers on front feet. And oddly enough, every single one of those came from pasture cows. Not a single one was on a freestall farm. And so that, that leads me to believe that there's more to the story of ulcer formation than just hard surfaces and things like that. I think there has, there's a lot more uh, in, involved as far as what causes these things to form in the first place that we really haven't all, we don't have all figured out yet. I think what we'll find over time is that there's some type of metabolic trigger that if we give this foot um, certain circumstances that will allow this ulcer to form. What do I mean by that? If let's say we have this metabolic trigger and we have poor foot angle, that's going to make the likelihood of an ulcer to form. Or if we have this metabolic trigger associated around calving time, that'll allow that peel bone to sink and will create um, situations where an ulcer can form. There's just too many variables, I think, that all come into play that ultimately put this foot in a position where it can ulcer. And other times, when that situation's not there, these feet don't ulcer, even with poor foot angle, or even around calving times, or even around situations where they're on concrete a lot. So, like I said, it's a complex issue, and I think there's a lot more to it that we just really need to learn over time. You've seen in some of my other videos, some of these ulcers that are more like protrusions out the bottom of the foot. This is more of a flat one here. And as you'll see, as I remove some of this loose hoof, it doesn't have a lot of protrusion to it. It'll all ultimately almost look like an abrasion in that sole rather than you know an ulcer forcing through. And I think that's another one of the dis distinctions we see with different types of ulcerations and the different mechanisms that cause them.
I'm just trying to take my time here and try to work up that loose horn so I can get my knife edge underneath that and kind of lift as I cut to pull that loose horn away from the lesion itself so I don't, don't cut into it as I'm working here. You can see here how this lesion is much newer, much fresher than that first one. So a likely scenario here that happened is probably that other foot uh, ulcered first. She began to favor that foot a little bit, focusing more weight on this one. And this one then began to experience more trauma. This foot then began to ulcer over time too. And, and maybe one of the scenarios too with why these show up on, uh, on pasture cows is because if this cow had been on cement, she would have shown lameness on that right front much earlier, and that foot would have been treated, you know, before this this left front could have ulcered, uh, and we would have prevented this ulcer from that. But because they're out on softer ground, and they're able to basically hide that lesion longer, which then results in more trauma to that other foot. So that's a very plausible scenario in this case, but you know, we, it's, it's just speculation. We don't really know that for sure, but it's obvious that that other foot is, is much further along in the healing process than this one is. So just like that first foot, I'm gonna get a rubber block on here to relieve pressure from that injured claw. And in this case, I am gonna wrap this foot. I'm not gonna use salicylic acid though, just like I explained in the first foot, the risk of dermatitis here is really low. So I'm not gonna use salicylic acid on it. I'm gonna use the wrap just to keep debris off of this fresh lesion for a couple of hours. That's really all it's, all it's set to do. This wrap comes off right away. It doesn't stay on for days. It's just so we don't get stuff caught in that that newly healing lesion. All right, let's let her out and see how she walks on her new kicks. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We will see you all on the next one.